So is calorie restriction enough to protect against Alzheimer's? This study says no. It's, it's great for weight loss, but not for Alzheimer's. You need to fast. You need to keep the, your calorie restriction, if you're gonna do that, within a certain window, leaving the rest for fasting. Okay, so here's what this study on Alzheimer's did is this is so cool because, okay, check this out. Put this in the comments. How many of you are like, fasting works because it's calorie restriction? That's why it works. I can't, I get that question all the time. So this delineates in this study between calorie restriction and fasting, and this is important. So this new study says that it may not be calorie restriction but it might be that the fasting is what causes brain benefits in Alzheimer's. So in this study, these mice were given a normal diet that they can eat all day long. There was also a group that was on a low calorie diet that they ate all day long, but they had to have a 30% calorie restriction. The third group was on an OMAD diet. Remember OMAD? One meal a day. So where they ate all the food they wanted in one single meal, which equated to 30% calorie restriction, but they only ate it with one meal a day. The other two groups could eat all day long. So no change, 30% restriction in calorie change, but they could eat it all day long and 30% restriction of calories within one meal the rest of the day left for fasting. And this is what they found, that reducing calories alone definitely led to weight loss and improved glucose tolerance. Yep, that's awesome. However, fasting was necessary for the benefits of calorie restriction to happen. And these were the four things. When you had the calorie restriction within a very specific window, leaving longer time for fasting, they saw better insulin sensitivity. They saw a reduction in Alzheimer's pathology. They saw an increase in neuroprotection. They saw an improvement in cognition and memory. So is calorie restriction enough to protect against Alzheimer's? This study says no. It's, it's great for weight loss, but not for Alzheimer's. You need to fast. You need to keep the, your calorie restriction, if you're going to do that, within a certain window, leaving the rest for fasting. Okay, why is this? And this is so important. You're going to hear a theme. And when this book comes out, I've been going on like over 100 podcasts. You're going to hear a theme. The hero for the aging woman's brain is a ketone. The ketone is the hero. So when we go into our 40s and we, are, we start to get this pruning process where these old neurons are being sloughed away and new neurons are starting to appear and you are in your perimenopausal years having uh, brain fog, trouble focusing, depression, anxiety, insomnia. What else did I miss in the brain? Those are irritability. Your ticket to a more peaceful brain is a ketone. I cannot say this enough. And this study, this Alzheimer's study shows that. So here's why. When you lose estrogen, you lose your body and your brain's ability to use glucose. So if you can't use glucose, which was powering up your brain, you only have one other fuel source. And that fuel source is a ketone. I have witnessed not only in myself, I have witnessed in hundreds of thousands of women. And I'm going to be as bold and as confident to say that I do not think there is another human on the planet that has watched more women fast than me. And I'm not saying that from a elitism. That is not why I'm saying it. I'm saying that I see the pattern that the ketone is the immediate thing that brings your brain back online. 
please tell me if you're getting that and you're understanding this because I, I watch so many women suffer through their 40s and they can't focus and they're irritable and we're losing women. Women are killing themselves and divorces are happening and we're not even giving women a brain chance. And there is one easy thing they can do and it's the ketone. And this study is another example of this. So if you have a friend who's really struggling, please pass this message on because ketones are free. Now, if you're doing HRT, awesome. Add the ketone to HRT. Tell me how your brain works then. If you are not doing HRT because you're nervous about it, I also understand that. Try adding a ketone so that you can power up your brain. It doesn't take a lot of fasting. It is a quick, quick solution to the horrible brain changes that happen to women as they go through this process. Okay, a little passionate about that. Okay, now let's go to your questions. Thank you for letting me go on a rant. I needed to, I get, I, I, I just see the solution. I see the solution. The menopausal brain solution is so much easier than we've been taught. And I see that the cultural conversation is take more HRT, take more HRT. And then I see all the women that pour onto our site and they're like, I took HRT and all I did is gain weight. I took HRT and it didn't help. What do I do now? How we got to create solutions for everybody. And that's why to me, the ketone will work for everybody. That's why I'm so, and it's free. That's the, the single mom who's working 4 million jobs and is trying to just keep her head above water. You know, it, is one more patch going to be the solution for her? Or does she need some lifestyle, cha lifestyle changes? She can't get to the market and start to buy organic food. She doesn't have that kind of disposable income, but she can make a ketone from inside of herself. This is why I'm so passionate is it's e brain equality for everybody when you start to tap into those ketones. Okay, check this out. I have a free fasting guide for you all. It's free and it's gonna teach you all the basics of fasting. It's gonna teach you how to kill hunger when you fast, which is really cool. And it's gonna show you how to break your fast among many other things. All you gotta do is click on the link below and enjoy. Okay, Amanda, I wanna go down to this one. Dr. Stacy Sims. Okay, I wanna go to this one because I keep, I keep bringing this up. When you all are looking at information on social media, I want to encourage you to go to long format. Reels, you know, we're gonna take this video, we'll cut it up into reels and we'll put it out, but we will point everybody back to the big video. Because when you look at something in long format, whether it's a podcast or you read a book or you look at a video, you're getting the nuance. And the differences between Stacy and I's belief around fasting for menopausal women is in the nuance. So here is what I will explain to you, the difference that I see between Stacy and I. I brought Stacy onto my Resetter podcast. We talked about our differences, so you can go hear it from her mouth. Fast, what she is teaching women who are high athletic performing endurance athletes. If you are going into a heavy workout, if you are going into a hundred mile bike race, if you are going into a big strength training session in the gym, fasting may not be your tool. That might be the moment that you want to eat before you go into that athletic contest. That is what Stacy is saying. I would agree with her. Now, Stacy and I talked on my podcast about how she puts protein powder and collagen in her coffee before she works out many times. Not every day, many times. So she protein loads her coffee. So she is still in a fat burning place when she goes in to her endurance activity and she has put the 
uh, uh, needed nutrients in her coffee. So she has protein before she goes into that workout. Then she comes out of that and has protein in a recovery meal through food immediately. She is a ve vegetarian. She's plant-based. Okay. She also has a very strong opinion that when in the morning we, we eat, it triggers the whole hormonal system to turn on. Now, what we know is that when you're eating in the light, yes, you are, if the morning is, is light out, you are stimulating and telling the brain, you're giving the brain a whole bunch of hormonal messages. So if you are struggling and you can't figure out what your eating window is and your hormones are all over the place, I recommend if you're eating, maybe you'll eat in an eight hour window and maybe that food window will be in the light. Stacy and I talked about this in my podcast about, well, maybe for women who are having massive hormonal imbalances, maybe what they should do is they should eat breakfast, lunch, and a very early dinner around three or four o'clock and then shut their, their eating window down earlier. And then they would end up having a fasting window that would st start around four o'clock. So you get to decide where you're gonna move this eating window. If you're a high endurance athlete, you may wanna put your eating window earlier in the day that will fit within Stacy's protocols. What I'm talking about here is your mental clarity. And in order to fire up your brain, you need ketones. And when I look at studies like this, and I see that fasting one meal a day is going to improve neuroprotection. It's going to give you better insulin sensitivity. It's going to improve cognition and memory, one meal a day, I look at that and I'm like, pick your, pick your window. Okay, are you fasting and you're still not losing weight? Check out this video because you might be missing a key part of your fasting experience that's gonna unlock weight loss. So if you think about it, all the humans that emerged out of that time have the gene that allows us to go without food and that gene they believe is in all of us today. 